Hello and a very warm welcome to the Andrew Eborn Show, where yet again I'm joined by the fabulous, and I do mean fabulous, the wonderful Eileen. <laughs> How are you? Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I am so incredibly well. I'm so delighted to see you looking brilliantly well yourself. Oh, yes, where have you been today? You look very sunburned today. Well, do I? I? I've been to the Bahamas, you know me. I travel everywhere. Oh, <laughs> I have my own little private to New York. The beach. This morning you went to New York, didn't I you? Did. I did. I travel the world, you know, and this is, yeah. this is the joy about it. I'll tell you what, what you I did it? today. You'll never guess where I've been. And you'll never guess what they... I'm going to show you. Do you know what that is? Um, Scott's Citron and Aloysius, no, Aloe Vera. <laughs> Aloysius is better. I, li I like Aloysius. <laughs> Sanitizer. Yes. So this, I went with a very good chum, showbiz chum. I went to Scott's, the restaurant. Um, oh, right. We had some wonderful fish because it was open and uh, they very gave the kind of gave us some lovely table. Oh. Um, I sat outside that wonderful place and what is glorious? This is the best personalized hand sanitizer. That wonderful, yes. Isn't that good? So I had that with my lobster thermidor and it was delicious. Lovely. I love all of that. So that's where I've been today. That's why I'm wearing my. my that's why you're all dressed up. And so I dressed up for you. I was in my Bermuda shorts. For, for no, you, you dressed up to go to Scots. Now, come on. Wow, we love it. Uh, Where's yeah. your favourite restaurant? I mean, you, you, you dine everywhere yourself, don't you? Where, where's your I don't favorite? seem to go anywhere. Very, I haven't been anywhere for ages and ages, apart from the Café Rouge. <laughs> the, the Rough Caf. The Rough, the rough Caf. Is good. No, the but rough that's caf. what we love. But we have one in Hampstead and we have one in Highgate as well. And they're, they're doing okay, hopefully, aren't they? Or they, they're suffering a bit? Well, they're all closed now. And it's that's the problem, bankrupt. isn't it? Because a lot of people, have you been, I know you did this actually, you've, you've been eating out to help out, haven't you? I've been trying to. But I went to Gales today, but I mean, they charged me eight pounds or something for a cup of coffee. I bet oh, and you a, did it. And, and, and a bun. Of coffee. Um, it was I'll only two pounds, yeah. Coffee. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm looking forward. It was, it was, it was, it was only two pounds fifty yesterday. Oh, well, that, but that's, yeah, well, I see what happened because you must have had a bum and things like that. Yesterday was the last day, the last day of August. When last day of the half price, I know. Last day of the help outs by <sighs> eating out. Now Some you have people to... say they're going to keep doing it. Well, a lot of restaurants are sort of saying that. They're, they're turning around and saying, well, we quite like having customers, so we're going to entice yes. them. Uh, and do but that. Gales is always, I mean, Gales has always got lots of people. I mean, people around here are so bloody rich, they go to the... Oh. I, I, <laughs> I look at the cars coming down the road, BMW, BMW, Porsche, you know, all those cars. And everything. Ah, well, they're you know so now, a BMW is no longer a BMW, but because of the exam fiasco, it's known as a CMW. So it's What's been downgraded by one grade. It's They've been down great. What is the posh car now then? Oh, I don't know. Well, well, I, I guess I, mean, I, I drive a nice car. I, I, I like my car, but I what actually, I actually walk everywhere, which is which I think is much better. I know you do. I know you do. But I mean, you know, it's just all that. And then, what was the other thing I was going to say about it? And I, I've got the ham and high, and I found oh. how wonderful it is. That all our, all the children in our schools have all got huge grades. Oh, well done, the Hammond Hall. All the one Ooh. Westminster, Hampstead, and Highgate, and Golders Green, they've all got enormous... Well, hurricanes so hardly ever happen. Yeah, hurricanes <laughs> hardly ever happen in the Hammond High. It's rather oh, good. I know. Well, no, but I love a good positive story. And we were talking about this earlier because we turned around and said, look, the really important topics that we discuss here, in amongst the wonderful frivolity. And we were talking about last time, the really important thing about recognising that green-eyed monster jealousy and recognise it when it comes Ooh, to yes. bite you on the ankle. The monster jealousy, I know. And it is amazing. It, it, it keeps, I don't know, it keeps popping up all over the place. Mm. It's really, really un... But, but you said to me afterwards, uh, Aline, as you, you said to me, I didn't laugh very much in that because it was a serious... No, I didn't laugh very much because it's a very serious subject. 
Absolutely. which I take very seriously, yes. Absolutely, and, and it is serious, and we don't recognise... it is totally senseless. I mean, it makes no sense at all, does but it? But we're lucky because we recognise it, and I think what we're trying to do on these things, by these little far-side chats at different times yes. of the night or day, well, we love our I've been... What is, oh, I've forgotten what it's called now. What is it I've, I've suddenly found out about myself? That I am... I have a small amount of, <laughs> I'm not very strong, what's it called? Borderline. Yes, you, you, you sent me a text about this. You said you've just... Yes, got... borderline personality. So who told you that? The, um, Google. Google told you that? Yes. Ah, that powerful... There's medical... a lot about it on Google. Because there's, there's nine... I mean, I didn't know about this. It's not something new to me. There are nine. That's the abandonment thing. You know, that, that thing we're talking about. And this quick... And then the mood changes. Now, that happened to me today. The mood changed. I was really depressed. You know, I was at that stage when... What am I getting? There's nothing for me. Life's over. Did I, did I, did I. All that terrible stuff goes on. And then I opened this book by Paul Bertil. And it, the first bit made me laugh. And I was suddenly perfectly all right. All it needs is the laugh, really. Well, so that is why our, our job is so important, is to make people laugh. And I, this I, is why people are so bloody miserable at the moment, because they, they can't get the laughs. Well, I, I think it's a combination of both, and, and we've discussed this before, in the same way we have the tragedy and the comedy mask. I actually think our job, if anything, is to take people on a journey. It's a journey where you do a roller coaster of all of those emotions, because we laugh, we cry, we express emotion. And that's the key thing, isn't it? And I think a lot of people, and I've been talking to people about content, and how people basically come up with content. People, magicians will say, well, I do this trick and that trick. And, and musicians will say, I sing that song and that song. And I think that's wrong to focus on the names of what you do. If people focus on how you make somebody feel. How you do it. Of course it is. I mean, that's what I've been doing, you know, all the time. That's, that's my, my, my thing. Um, but yes, no, I think laughter is, is the thing. Shall I tell you, I saw, saw, what worried me after we talked about jealousy, I thought, why aren't I jealous? Am I unemotional, maybe? Do I not have no heart, you know? And then I thought, well, what does upset me and what, what makes me sort of happy and miserable is um, Dodo. Do you I, know Dodo yes. on Facebook? Yes. When they find some poor little kitten that's all been treated badly and they make it better. And that makes me cry. Well, of course, because, so, because so that's that, what it is. That that's what it is. Yes, it's and sentimental. that's the emotion, isn't it? That's what people are looking at, and this yes. is why in yes. advertising you have puppy dogs selling toilet paper, and you have little kittens. <laughs> <laughs> this this is what you want, because human emotion we uh, it appeals to us. We we hate to see things hurt. And that, when that, things are particularly right. nice, where it's difficult, and it's that juxtaposition, and people do it very well in certain film genres. You remember the singing detective and so on and so forth, where they would yeah. have really, really violent scenes, and what would happen is they would play wonderful classical music in the background. And because what oh, yeah. happens, that intensifies yeah. the emotion with yeah, the juxtaposition good. of the beautiful and the ugly. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I thought for a moment, I thought that was rather good. And it's rather like this snapshot we have on the screen. You're the beautiful, and I'm the other one. And that's <laughs> just the vision. Well, that, that's, that's what it is, of course. That's why people like seeing us, you see. Like, Absolutely, they love it. And it is that just the position <laughs> of... <laughs> of the uh, of the tragedy, <laughs> it's a tragedy in the comedy, isn't it? And I think yes. that for me, in the tragedy. both emotions. <laughs> so I think it's an interesting one, and that's why sometimes, and we talk about this, and people talk about when you're looking at plays and so on and so forth. Pinter will do it brilliantly. It's the power of things like silence. Yeah. 
yeah, all the different, yeah. And the pause after something really noisy. Yes, yeah. Very powerful. Be calm after the storm. And that's the dramatic bit. And then yes, what I think, do you do? I, th I, th I think Mother Nature or God or whoever it was that organises all this does it pretty well. And that's where we get all our messages from. No, absolutely. And, and I think what happens is when you're on that journey, and, and the, the great filmmakers, and I, as you know, I go and see everything on the because it's on big screen and I'm lucky right in the heart of London. Yeah. So I will see everything because even terrible movies, and there are a few of those, even the terrible ones, ones, you can learn something from, can't you? Do you watch um, talking pictures? I do. That, that's great. I mean, you get everything there. You get all the old, old English films. You know, some of them are well, the angry silence I saw the other day when Richard Attenborough was very young and, you know, really very good. And Brian Forbes was, he was involved in it as well. I mean, I was there when it happened. I mean, not when the, the story happened. I mean, when the film happened. Right. And Brian Forbes was the, was the producer. And Dickie Attenborough was the star. And that lovely, um, oh, I can't remember. Alan Bates was the um, hero, you know, the one who um, wouldn't stick to him and then was very sad when he, when he did it. Was he ashamed that he'd not stuck with him? And it's about the factory that goes on strike and he refuses to go on strike. But I knew all the people in it, you know, so it was really nice to see it. Yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, Ollie was was in it, but very very briefly. Ollie Reed. Yes. Very very briefly. Did you know? So. Did you know Ollie Reed? Yeah, I did. Tell me, tell me about your life with him. My life with him. I didn't have a life. With him. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for the headline here. This is this is. Uh, oh, I see. My I life. Ollie. Reed. Oliver Reed is very faithful to his to his girlfriend because the girlfriend that he had. And he married her and stayed with her for the rest of his life. But he did have a go at me, I must admit, yes. He, he thought had we a had a go at you. He thought we Oliver had Reed had a go at me. I love that. We've been looking we for a title for the episode. He thought we had chemistry. Oh, look at you. Is it, what? What, tell, me, tell me how that came about. How did you first meet him? Well, I think it was to do with angry silence because I went to, to onto the set because my my local my boyfriend was in it. My lo particular boyfriend at that moment was in it, and um, Ollie took a fancy to me. That was all, and he was with his girl Kate, and he said, "Can we do a swap?" <laughs> Can you do a what? He didn't do a swap. He wanted. Oh, to I do a swap. swap. <laughs> and no, it, no, we didn't. We didn't do a swap. I have to say. And when was this? When Angry Silence, when it was made, I think it was nineteen sixty something or other. Right, there you know, thereabouts. Yes. No, oh, fascinating. And and did you did you did you like him? Yes, very much. Yeah, he is. He's a nice guy. Yes. And I mean, I met him several times afterwards because he lived in Chelsea, and I was I was living in Chelsea at the time. So we sort of bumped into each other every so often. And he always did that, Kim. He did a sort of special gesture, meaning, you know, something like that. Pop, pop goes the weasel. Yes, that it was a kind of gesture. And the who? <laughs> meaning, meaning chemistry. Meaning oh, yes, chemistry. well, it, was, it sort of sounded like something from Silence of the Lambs just then. I thought that was Anthony Hawkins, but it was actually. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it was just meaning, meaning chemistry. We had chemistry, yes. Oh, that's right. What well, that's. But we didn't. I don't think we had any of it. I mean, it was just very nice. Very nice guy. I thought he was nice, but no. he probably wasn't. Um, he probably wasn't really very nice. But I mean, well, when you say probably, yeah. you should always. And we've we've had this discussion before as well. You should always go on your own experience of people. Yes, my so own often. experience. Yeah, so often say, oh, that person's horrible, or or I've had a really bad experience with them. And well, we I mean, that. So when I saw him on on uh, in a movie, I said, "That's my friend Ollie." You know. I mean. Not that he wasn't a great friend, but I mean, I just felt friendly towards him. Yeah, and that's great. What did you do together? Did you ever go out together as friends? No. Well, no, but we we don't. You didn't go out with people. We we, we used to go to clubs and things and meet people, you know. 
You must have heard about our clubs. Tell, what club, tell me about some of them. Let, let's go through some of the clubs. What well, when we'd done a show, this is something that could happen. When we'd done a show, we would go to McCready's and have dinner because we were all given free uh, membership of McCready's. And so we'd go to McCready's and we'd meet everybody there. And then we would probably pop into Jerry's to see if Kenny Clayton was playing the piano and maybe do that, sort of say hello to a few more people and finish up at the Buxton. Now the Buxton was the big deal because everybody was used to go to the Buxton because there was no press. Press was not allowed at the Buxton. And um, people got very, very, very drunk, as you can imagine. <laughs> and I remember Terence Rigby sitting on the, on the stairs, completely tired. Um, and I have vision, we used to play darts for some reason. But you could eat at any of those places, you see. I'm just saying this would be a special night. And then, because the person behind, who was serving behind the bar would be Bert Kwok. So then we would all go to Chinatown for breakfast. And he would be ordering, he would order the, the meal because he didn't use the menu. He said, oh, I'm, 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 I'm. and they come up with a great big fish and things like that. You know. So that was, that was life. And then after that, and everybody by this time would be very drunk indeed, apart from the breakfast, they would liven you up a bit. But um, then people who lived in Hampstead, which was most people at that time, would race from Trafalgar Square to Hampstead Tube Station, which is a direct straight line, and they would tear along in the middle of the night, or very early in the morning, breakfast time. And then they put bollards up, and then the bollards were now knocked down <laughs> next time. It was crazy. But, but very fond memories of that sort of time. I mean, who else? Oh, really? It was just it was just ridiculous. I mean, the whole thing was ridiculous. Yeah, really. People people like ridiculous. People like to let their hair. I know, but I don't know what people do now. I, I don't know what people do now because, and then of course, then the, the next lot of people um, would go to these clubs and just this loud music, you know, and dance. Uh, and and um, the music was too loud, you know, so you deafened. So we didn't, that wasn't nice. It, it, didn't, it wasn't a conversation place. I mean, what kind of conversations we had when everybody was pie-eyed, but anyway. Well, probably, the, probably the best kind. I mean, because what, what happens, and it is, it's interesting. It's an interesting profession. I mean, but people have their own challenges with alcohol and we get that sort of... Uh, that's it, that is the thing, yes, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, yes. I, I mean, o o Ollie obviously famously did. Uh, did, did uh, during those sort of... Uh, did you see him deteriorate? I see him what? Deteriorate. Did you see deteriorate? him? Deteriorate? Yes. I didn't. I mean, I met him when he was in... when I was in Chelsea, when I lived in Chelsea. And then I didn't live in Chelsea. I went to live in behind Bourne and Hollingsworth, which is not there anymore, um, next to the BBC, because I was working there. And I had my son there in Riding House Street. And then I came here, 1964, came right. here. Well, I mean, I, 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 anymore. I can imagine the late night clubs with, I mean, he was always known as a hell raiser. Uh, oh. Him. But they all were. All they, were all, they were all hell raisers, you know. They were all. Um, John Hurt. I saw him as um, Quentin Crisp. I told you that. The other yeah, day. you said a really emotional journey. He was wonderful. Um, and he lived, he lived in Hampstead. He lived in um, uh, Flask Walk. And so I used to see him when I had to take my son to school. He went to school in that flask walk uh, when he was little. Yeah. Yes, I was no good. No good going to school when you're big. 
Wait, <laughs> no, I mean, it's a little person. You, you, you can still go with me. You continue life every day. I learn something. I love. I from everybody. It's I. I love the fact. I mean, that's why I love about our chats is that swapping those sort of glorious days. And this is what people talk yeah, about. It was. Well, it was amazing. Yes, it was amazing. But I mean, the the Buxton closed. It was right. pulled down. I think um, I can't remember what happened. So it was to us have taken. It was behind the Haymarket. And um, it wasn't too safe because I remember my woman who is, I don't know what her job was uh, at the Pinder. <laughs> she had a job at the Pinder doing, I think she was sort of an assistant somebody. And she used to sleep with people a lot. And she would, <laughs> and she'd always try and find out who was who to have that night, you know. Oh, was that right? She had to have somebody every time, every day. And, um, Yes, yeah, she was rather. But she put a whole lot of costumes in the back of her car. She had a pulling car, we called it. A pulling car? <laughs> yes, it was um, um, a Lotus, I don't know. Well, I used to have a Lotus. Are they pulling cars? Well, hers was. Oh, right, okay. I used to have a Lotus. <laughs> I had a Lotus Elite. You almost lie down in it, you know. Oh, you can. And I remember the great yes. amount of Lotus I had. They in, did pull people had, had these had little little um, mm -hmm. headlights that used to come up. They're supposed to do that, you know, like this, sort of, and that looked fantastic. But my <laughs> had something wrong with it. it. Used to do that as it went along, which is not not really yeah. a pulling car at all. And I'm sure the only reason it had a heated rear window was to keep my hands warm when I pushed it. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was that was the thing. But uh, anyway. it also had the Lotus, and I remember it was um, it was my very first car. It used to have a cassette recorder in, and it was a recorder. You had a little microphone, so that as you're driving along. Terribly illegal now. So you're driving along, you can dictate all your little notes for people. Oh, isn't that a good idea? Handy, yeah. Handy. Uh, my very first car, Lotus Elite. So that was her pulling I, car, though. I would like to have one of those things that you speak into, and you don't have to type it. You know, and it types. Yes. That'll work okay. on the computer now. Where can you get those from? Well, it's automatic. You can you can do voice recognition uh, and voice recognition software which you can say anything you like into your computer i'll say i'll send you some links you can't write a book you can write a book what with, with, with that mind. well i'll have a go at it because um, well. i find that um my eyes get sore now because right. I'm, I'm due to go um and to the eye hospital but it's been put off and put off and put off it's yeah. not till october so i do get rather tired like the other day when we were trying to get the when we were trying to get the zoom and do you remember and it took a long time for some yes. reason and afterwards I was so tired because my eyes you know uh, it, it gets quite tricky doesn't it because I know this is when we have more than one person on because lots of people they, that <laughs> was so ridiculous well, everybody came on <laughs> that, that, that was yeah. Ridiculous. Yes, I mean, it, and how was Johnny? Was he all right? Yes, he's good. I, I, he's in in something. I mean, he's uh, he's had his own battles, as, as you know. And he, he's I know. Uh, yes, he's helped a lot of people um, by talking about those battles. Yes, um, indeed. That he um, well, he was talking about Peter Cook, and he's been a yes. big Peter Cook fan. And was, actually, a year ago, a year ago, yesterday. Um, that I went along to Johnny's play at uh, the afterlife of uh, P uh, Peter Dudge, basically Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. Where was this? It was at um, it was in uh, in Camden in in Border and uh, 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 was it uh, just uh, one of the places there, Dingwalls. They had it in Dingwalls, and they did a show there a year ago, and they had Rainbow George. Now, do you know Rainbow George? No. He was Peter Cook's neighbour for 20 odd years and he would oh. secretly record or actually not secretly he would publicly record um peter just talking about all sorts of things and he would encourage peter to go on radio shows pretending he was like a norwegian fisherman or things like that and have these phone-ins and glorious moments and and rainbow george set up this rainbow party uh, and he stood in various political uh, uh, campaigns. He, he took part in elections and I, I, in several, several seats he would stand. And he would have this great relationship with Peter Cook and they were best buddies and they talked about everything. 
And he has now, yeah. ever since that time, yeah. a year ago, he's sort of taken me under his wing <laughs> to, that, to the extent that anybody can. And he speaks to me regularly. He regularly comes on this show. Um, he tends yes, to be complaining because he doesn't like to be seen in sight. Um, so he normally will, will do it on the phone and he'll talk about Peter Cook and he'll talk about how he's casting now for what he wants to do about the spirit of truth and uh, the, the rainbow kingdom, if you like, the spirit of truth, which is basically bringing the new age of everything, if you like. So he, he will say that everything is predestined. Everything is predestined. We are but players as that famous oh. person would say. And he was talking about that. So we should, we should get, we should get Rainbow George on. And maybe you could chat to him as well. I think you'd find yeah, it. Rainbow George, but I don't want to have to look at the screen for a long, oh, no, no, long no. time. With well, he lots doesn't of flashing. He does, as I say, he does a radio. I, I couldn't work out what was happening at all. It was dreadful. <laughs> it was flashing, flashing like, and this voice is going right because she's got rather a deep voice. So it's yeah. <laughs> it was so strange. It, it is incredibly strange. And the other thing that happens late at night with this thing is that the lighting goes all funny. So I'm going to pause this for a nanosecond because you've got very bright and I've got very dark. My suntan looks even. So just for 10 seconds, I'm going to turn some more lights on. 10 seconds. Now, oh, look, you're brighter. <laughs> Let there be light, and there was light. And you could see the us, many there. hands make light work, as they used to say. <laughs> it's got to be good. Um, but it is, you're right. And what's happening is in this sort of era is that everybody's working out how to cope in this new, new thing. And, and I think the coping mechanism, we talked about coping, is firstly recognizing issues. And there are really serious issues, and we try to tackle serious issues as well on the show. But also to recognize that one of the best cures for all sorts of ailments is the power of love, the power of laughter. Absolutely. We will right. have more of that. I will bring you on again as a, you're one of the yeah, regulars. We should get you on the radio, George. Um, no. We, do you remember I told you about Paul Bertil? Yes. Now I have to warn you, he probably doesn't, he probably couldn't do it because he probably wouldn't know how to do the Zoom thing, would he? That's I don't know. I, I've had people who are Zoom virgins and we teach them on the show and we make it easy and they come on, they pop on and go, oh, 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 look, there are people. And so I love it. It's like the discovery of fire, some of these things. So <laughs> I like going on that journey as so well. If he's never used it before, we can talk through it. Yeah, he probably hasn't got a, 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 a machine. Oh, well, that's all right. That makes make it a little bit more difficult. But I also, because what I also do, we can do and like... I can send him one, probably. Yeah. Anyway, the thing is that he's quite... I don't know how to describe him, really. I remember um, him, my, my little friend, a, a little friend of mine, I better not say her name, said... Oh, uh, she, she took one look at him. She said, you don't know somebody like that. <laughs> really? Is, 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 is a poet, darling. It's a bit sort of rough and ready, you know. Oh, no, no, it's wonderful. I know poet. I, I, think, I think he's great. I mean, you know, because he makes me laugh. Yeah, and that's the key, isn't it? And I think oh, I nice. no art to find But I mean, I hadn't, I hadn't seen him for, I'd probably be like two years ago. Well, it must be because the guy that he actually shouted at, because he shouted at somebody else on the way to oh, see he? me. And that guy died two years ago, so <laughs> it must have been two years ago. Oh, my goodness. So, I hope it wasn't as a result. No, he died. He, it was because I didn't turn up for a coffee. We apparently had arranged, because I just, every so often, we would arrange to have a coffee at one of the places, you know. Yes. And I had forgotten. So I was wicked. I was the worst person in the world. He said, you think that so and so and so and so and so is evil. Well, you're worse than he is. Because <laughs> yes. I didn't, you didn't have your coffee. a cup of coffee. <laughs> it, is, it is extraordinary. But sometimes, and it is that feeling and I, I I do understand this and so well so often firstly you're lucky that he told you because so often people don't say why they're upset with somebody and they'll just go into hiding. Oh, he, no he made it quite clear. Why oh, that's upset. good that's at least good because you have an opportunity. If you see me in the street don't say hello. <laughs> and 
how do you respond when people say that? Oh, all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, after that, because he lived very near, and after that, I didn't, every time I saw him, I just walked past, you know. Or well, then, then I started just doing a little wave. Oh, oh did you? Well done. A microwave. And then, and then the other day I said, hello. And that was when the book, the book came tumbling through my letterbox. Ah, you see. Very and good. a letter, a letter was with it saying, if you want any more books, ring me up and you probably want to give some to your friends. <laughs> Would oh. you come selling them? You're selling them, of course. Yes. But, but that, that's lovely. And so often, and we, and we touched on this in, in, in previous chats that we've had about building bridges. And, and I always oh, think yeah. Yeah. it's always about making the first move because what happens, people fall out all the time over the most ridiculous things. I know. Sometimes, I just say, turn up for a cup of coffee, never speak to me again. I mean, I know. <laughs> if you see me in the street, don't say hello. I know. It's extraordinary. But what happens sometimes? But, you're, he, you're, he is an, but I have to say to you that he yeah. is an alcoholic. I, well, I don't know whether he is now. I mean, he might not be now. I don't know because I haven't seen him for two years. Yes. But he does, he does, he's quite often quite drunk and very solemn and serious. And, and that's what's so funny about him because he's got this wonderful, you know, Jack D. Do you yes, of course. Yeah, but he's a sort of person who looks miserable. Yes. And I actually did take a photograph of him smiling once. Oh my goodness, hooray. Which was very rare, yes. And I said, yeah, here's a surprise for everybody, yeah. And it's very good. And people actually like that deadpan humour. It's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's that juxtaposition where people yeah. like the miserable people. They like the Victor Meldries of this world. Where you turn yes, around yes, and say, yes, people yes. love misery. Yes, people love misery, don't they? Shall I read? I'm just reading. The first one is very short. I will read it. Yes, you. please. I did read you and I, uh, I can't see it, can I, in the light. It says, it's called Bad News. I'm always hearing of people dying, especially now I'm getting older. Somebody is always telling me someone I know has died. And soon somebody somewhere will be telling someone in a casual way that I have died. I can almost hear it being said. Paul, the poet's dead. <laughs> That's the sort of thing. And look, so, and they're all very short, you see. And that's it, what it, it, like. it, it, may, it, it raises all sorts of things. And, and that's beautifully encapsulated because what happens is people do say that. And then nowadays you're hearing about that sort of stuff and they forget the impact. That that one day somebody's going to say it about you, yes. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, my goodness. Well, and, well, and, well. and what a what a moment that would be! And so many people say. I mean, I often ask on this program, uh, "How would you like to be remembered?" And and I, I and many people they, they stop and think and think. Well, firstly, I'd like to be remembered that I'm still here <laughs> because I don't want to go. Um, but also for some others, they, they do stop and think, and it makes them go back on their life and say, "Well, I hang about. Where are those glorious moments? If I wanted to have an input." If I wanted to talk, listen to the eulogy that somebody would be making, talking about my life, what are the bits I'd quite like them to put in, and what are the bits I'd like them to gloss over? And it, it's, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because it can dictate maybe yeah. how you live your life. And, and we've talked about this beforehand. If you can be anything, be kind. I've gone out of focus. Have you? It might be. I, I think you, know, you are in. I, I think what's happening is the light. And I think this is what happens because, you see, I've got a sort of halo effect. If I go back. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There you go. And I, I can look tiny. And I've got this sort of halo effect. <laughs> anyway, never mind. Never mind. No, I, I told you what I want people to sing. Now it's time to say goodbye. Yes, you That's did. What, but I also want. If Love Were All. Do you know that song? How does it go? Um, I believe in doing what I can, crying when I must, laughing when I choose. Hey ho, if love were all. I can't remember, I've got the wrong. I, I'm very difficult, I find it very difficult to suddenly sing. 
I've got the wrong key. I got, I got it too high. If love were all, I would be lonely. I believe the more you love a man, the more you give your trust, the more you're bound to lose. Although when shadows fall, I think if only somebody splendid really needed me, someone affectionate and dear, the cares would be ended if I knew that he wanted to have me near. But I believe that since my life began, all I've had is just a talent to amuse. Hey ho, if love were all. It's Noah Coward, of course. I oh, know, absolutely. And beautiful. And those words, and this is what we say about it, this is why Noel Coward stands the test of time. Those words are so beautifully crafted. Beautiful. And they all the right and the beautiful rhyme schemes. Every every single bit has got a different, you know, got the same rhyme. It's very beautifully written. Yeah. And it's it's it starts, I don't know, there's a verse which is Life is rather very rough and tumble for a humble deserves. <laughs> and, and I love that in the middle, you get the tumble. I, and have, to laugh, I have to laugh, you know, it's rather, I'm a, I have to laugh. The humble tumble, I, I love a humble tumble. Yes, yes, a humble deserves. Yeah. There's a humble tumble with a rumble, as yeah, you mumble. Yeah. No, it's good. No, it's I, good. I can't remember all the red, but I remember the, the words, because I sing it all the time, you know, I sort of go around singing it. <laughs> um, but I usually get a better key than that. I, it's oh, very strange. Nice. Very strange to singing something this way. It's, oh, very... I, 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 it's the new medium, which which is which which is what I love. Did did Ollie Reed sing? Was he a singer? I don't know. How would I know that? Well, I don't know. Sometimes people late at night. I mean, he, I, I saw. I remember the, the the thing I remember about Ollie Reed, and lots of people remember in television, is they used to have a program called Art Sykes. Dark. Do you remember that? What? After Dark, which is a late night chat show, similar to this sort of thing, where they would oh, have right. a lot okay. of people round um, in a, all little sofas and settees, and they would discuss whatever they would discuss, it didn't really matter whatever the topic was of the day, but they would have a green room, which people were allowed to bring in drinks from the green room, and they'd sit around and drink. And obviously- all, oh, all, Of course, well, they did used to drink, didn't they? Yes, I remember now. Yeah, well, yes, I, but famously he, he, he was, um, yeah. That's why they called him the hell. Peter O'Toole drank as well. I mean, he was very much. I like Peter. He was uh, he was very nice. I held his hand when he went to, when he went to collect his Olivia. Award. Oh, and he was terribly nervous. He was shaking, quite drunk, you see that. Or maybe he wasn't drunk. Maybe that's why he was shaking. <laughs> and, and so I looked after him. We stood at the back of the theatre and then he went up to get his award and they handed him this. This is a BBC, I hate the BBC. And they handed him the paper and his hand was like that. And I thought, well, when they televise this, obviously they'll cut. They didn't. They didn't. And I was very cross because, you know, and so, you know, when I looked at it on the television, when they showed the television of it, there he was with his shaking hand. Bless his heart. Yeah. And was that nerves, or you think he, he was suffering from... He probably needed a drink. Right. I, um, Robin once <laughs> was in the hospital. <laughs> I can't remember why, but he was in the hospital. And he had this, this nurse came in who was... A, uh, a man and he was a um and from a company you know how they sometimes bring in sort of strange people from yeah. nursing i don't know what that um i can't think of the word anyway he wasn't a, a regular nurse he was one from a from a, 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 a literary nurse they sometimes bring in right? yeah that's right and he said i'm going he said to robin i'm going to give you an injection he said um, the trouble is my hands are shaking a bit because I haven't had a drink yet. <laughs> and, and Robin said, no, you're not. And the voice came and the whole hospital heard Robin say, no, you're not. <laughs> Imagine him. Uh, no, my hands are shaking because I haven't had a drink yet. But was he joking? No, 
his hands were shaking. Oh, well, we were. Oh, dear. It was that sort of thing. Good, good heavens. Oh, anyway, I, I went and complained, you know, to the, to the lady. But she said, yes, we heard him say no, no, oh, you're not. He knew how to protect Robin, didn't he? He was quite, it's quite good. He had a good so with, with Oliver Reed, I mean, yeah, as you said, and uh, there was this programme after dark and he was famously on television being very drunk. And... Oh, when he walked out, is that the one he walked out of? Well, yes, because what happened, it was, that's right, it was a, and I know the producers of it, they're good friends of mine, and, uh, and, and, and they were working on this. And it was this really, doesn't matter, it's late night, it's everybody's just sitting around, and they're talking about the topics of the day, and, and they're all given a drink if they want to have one. And uh, Oliver Reed was sat next to, they uh, deliberately placed next to somebody who's very serious and very proper um, and talking very sensibly. And uh, <laughs> Ollie was so mischievous and so well, apparently drunk. Um, and he was all over the place and put his arm round and in totally what appeared to be inappropriate ways. And, and in the end, they, uh, they sort of all tur turned on him. I think he was kissing this person next to him. And it was, made them feel terribly uncomfortable. And, but it's car crash television that people talk about for years. Yes, yes. It was live and people like it when people misbehave when they're doing naughty things and doing the wrong things at the wrong time. Yes. That's what people remember. Yeah. And that's what they remember about Oliver Reed. Yeah, I I I, I hadn't I hadn't thought about that. I mean I, I you know I didn't I don't think I saw it. Do you know what that is? Let's have a look. That looks like a band. You're waving around a bit. It's it's a, a sort of what is it? A jingly jangly band? Well, no. <laughs> it's to keep mosquitoes at bay. Do you have many mosquitoes in Hampstead? No, but you have other... <laughs> it's obviously working, then. <laughs> it's, yes. It's... <laughs> no, because it was, because I was sitting outside Gales. Yes. And I had my coat on. And this wasp came and sat there, you know, next to me. Yes. So I slipped my... I slipped my I um sleeve up and it disappeared must have disappeared. Oh right, oh right, so it worked not just for mosquitoes but for wasps as well. Oh yes, any uh, insects, yes. Any insects are you selling it? No. Oh, no I, I, like a little I, shop I, thing. I got a packet of them, twelve in a packet. I don't know why I need twelve of them. Well why why did you need them in the first place? What was the inspiration for buying them? Yes, there was something. Something happened because I know somebody who was bitten by something and was terribly, terribly ill by some, some kind of mosquito or some kind of fly or something like that. And, and of course, there's a plague of ticks. Ah, you've got to be careful. And you've got to be very careful of those. Um, and, um, I, you know, I, I, when I get, if I get bitten by a mosquito or something like that, I get big lumps. <laughs> hives, they're called hives. Yeah. I've had them all over my face sometimes. But, but this little bangle stopped them coming, so you, you no longer have them. Apparently. Yes, well, I mean, it did go away. Oh. I, all I did, I pushed up my sleeve, you see, because I had it under my sleeve. And I just pushed up my sleeve and it just flew away. Oh, very good. So that is interesting, isn't it? Well, it's very interesting. Especially for all, all insects, to keep all insects. All away. insects at bay. Well, all that's them. fascinating. That's fascinating. So yeah. all good stuff. So final thing, final thing for today, keeping things at bay. Oh, well, because <laughs> because you're, I know you're disappearing into the dark and it's sort of... Uh, I know, I know. sort of glorious moment. When I, I'm, I'm, I'm gone, I'm my, gone all my crazy. Suntan, my suntan is looking better. <laughs> Well, have I gone out of focus? I don't understand. I, I think it's the light. I think what happens with these computers is that, that they're not... Um, if I, if I go back, I'm all right. Well, so, uh, I'm, well, which is I'm, too, I'm too close to you, uh, Andrew. I, I think that you, you can That's never be it. too close. It's, it's gone to my head. The social... <laughs> the glorious social distancing. When was the <laughs> last time you saw Ollie, Ollie Reed? What was the last occasion? Ollie? Oh, I have no idea. I mean, I, I lived in Chelsea a lot of years ago, like in the late 50s. And I haven't seen, I haven't seen him since, I don't think. 
and I just you just was just around, you know, how people are. You know, Finches was a sort of place where people gathered, and the and the Queen's Elm. Do you know the Queen's Elm? I do. <laughs> Yeah, that that was Michael Michael Rogan, I think he was called, the Irish Irish painter, and I knew Elizabeth Brink. Very good. Yes, and Enzo Platzota. I think I mentioned Enzo Platzota to somebody. No, it wasn't to you. No, it was to and some somebody Italian. So people cool. will always ask, and I, I know we've touched on this beforehand, is when is this book coming out? Because you have such glorious memories with some names who are icons of the industry and you've got many a tale to tell and you yeah, yeah, a few tales yes but i didn't do anything really outrageous you know i don't well, think i, I was always working oh no but i understand but many of the people in your circles were doing outrageous things which make glorious yeah, yeah, they did a lot of outrageous things yes and do you think a lot of it because nowadays this is where we have the what i call the sultans of spin they will make, they will create stories to make people sound as though they're... No, no. I know, it's true. Well, I mean, you know how our, our ministers are very good at creating stories. And Mr. Trump is genius at it. Well, I, as I say, I, if you his, listen to the narrative and uh, I... I, um... I just feel, I feel very angry about that because I know Portland and I know Seattle and they are the two most civilized cities in the world and everybody you know they, they win, win all the things you know the best place to live is seattle you know and he's actually saying that the people in seattle are violent and things you know but he's the he that sends in these violent people you know to make trouble his bloody his feds sends them in in plain clothes in order to create trouble in the in the most peaceful towns so that then he can say this is what's going to happen when joe biden gets in you know if if joe biden gets in well, i i think i think what happens is there's always a common pattern and that you get all sorts of reports and some of which you always have to question what, yes you have from. to question them all yes but well, i mean I, I mean i know actually know people who are living there you see Yes, I know I, I get directly sourced yeah. evidence and ask them, but even Those that, places. and I always say this, even that is one person's viewpoint, and there'll be somebody else with the people, and I always like, like to, it's because somewhere between all those different viewpoints, the truth may lie, but you need to hear all of the evidence, and so often... I mean, it's Denzel Washington. His son is very famously in that new movie. Uh, um, Tenet uh, at the moment is doing very, very well at the box office. Huge movie, huge movie. But Denzel Washington always said the problem with the news is that people are rushing to be first. It's not about the truth. It's oh, really definitely yes. Oh yes, yes. I mean, um, the press. I mean, I know about the press. So absolute, but it. <laughs> It's not the press I'm thinking about. It's people who are actually there at the time, you know, when things happen. And that's, you know, and I happen to know that there are two places that I know quite well. Oh, they're fantastic places, absolutely. And there's some wonderful people. The, the reality is... Uh, uh, and of you course, know, you know, Seattle, of course, is a lot of Indians in Seattle. Because well, so Seattle's a glorious creative hub. I mean, and, and they come up with all sorts of tech city and all that sort of stuff. And oh, I yes. love all of those places. And the, and the people... People everywhere. There's great people everywhere and there's some rotten people everywhere. That's the reality of the world, isn't it? But the, ro the rotten people in these cases have been sent in. They're not native people. Anyway, we shouldn't talk about this, I oh, suppose. No, it's, good to, it's good to talk but, about everything. I, 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 just it, find, I, just, I just get very upset by it. I, because, I you know, they, they, people write, ring me and they say these, some of those feds have been in again, you know, creating trouble. The feds. It's always important, I say, always important to get all sides of every story, which is, uh, which is, uh, as we say, question everything because the truth lies yeah. somewhere between all of those aspects. But just to finish, I mean, this is your yes, certainly. Read. Yes, certainly, yes. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't do anything in the press at all. I don't know. Well, I, I question this is everything. Really in Facebook, everybody's, you know, sort of being very. Well, I mean, everybody, you know, are sensible people. I'm afraid. 
Oh, no, I, I, I understand. I understand. And I always like to say, say try and get things balanced and, and hear lots of different views and things like that. Because it's uh, to, between all of that is is very, very important. And in the same way as Oliver Reed in his last moments, he was just portrayed as that Hellraiser. But he was an incredible talent. And when you see the last movie and they started using AI to recreate the scenes that he didn't quite finish. Did you see that movie? Which one's this? <laughs> So this is the very last Oliver Reed movie uh, where he didn't quite finish the movie. So they put him in with AI. So they created. Oh, yeah, so I seem to remember that happening. Yeah. Yes. And, and, it's in, and what do you think about all of that? Where, where actors and actresses can be replaced, if you like. Yes. yes. I, I saw something else. It wasn't Oliver Reed. It was somebody else who had this done to them when they died. They were they were, you know, I can't remember who it was there. Well, it's in Star Wars as well. They had, um, uh, obviously, Princess Leia, they, they, because she didn't, Carrie Fisher, uh, didn't finish oh. the movie, so they put bits that of... That was so sad. Um, I think it was extraordinary, wasn't it, that, that she and her mother both went. I met Debbie. Okay. When did you meet her? Um, at, she did a show... That and but Kevin had had um, all these these people. He used to handle a lot of the you know the, the Americans when they came over to do shows. And I didn't meet her because we used to do. The word Abadaba comes from a song called the Abadaba Honeymoon, which she did with Carlton Carpenter. And I said to Kevin, "Do you think she'll do it?" And he said. We'll, we'll sort of, we'll see, we'll see. And she did show that particular film, you know, in her, in her show. Um, but I, I, I didn't find her terribly warm person. <laughs> no, not really. Well, I think it was... I believe Carrie was fantastic, which no, I never. No, I, and and I've, I've said this before, Hannah. And lots of people give you different reports about different people. Yes, and the, I'm sure. the honest answer is is that everybody will have days when they're very warm or moments when exactly. they're very warm, and days um, when they're not. And it's that snapshot of when you meet them. And then people say, I mean, they say this to me, and they say this to you, and, and, and that sort of stuff is that they will turn around and say, I met such and such a celebrity, and they were wonderful. They were so. Oh, wonderful. I know. I know. And Just depends what kind of a mood they're in. That's, yeah. That's true of everybody. Because then somebody else will say, oh, I met them, they were horrible. They were dismissive. Well, you probably approached them and they had a meal or they had a bad day or whatever. That's the thing. We are all the same. Yeah. Out of respect. She was, she, was a very, she was very needy. I know that because Kevin used to sort of stay up practically all night with her in her hotel. And I mean, um, I mean, there was obviously no sex involved because Kevin is, you know, very gay. But um, yeah, he used to look after her very well. But she did need a lot of attention. Care. Lots of people, lots yeah. of people in the profession. I think she <laughs> took a lot of um, some things. You know, bits and pieces of things. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to say the word, but I mean, you know what I mean. But that was why her eyes were just. Right. It was no sparkle there. And it's it's a shame, isn't it? It is a shame. And um, what 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 I love is just remembering that you, everybody needs a bit of sparkle, and whoever you are, and and sometimes those who are the most insecure are the most needy and need that constant support. Yeah, absolutely. The biggest stars when you're surrounded by people who are just bigging you up all of the time and you're being eaten by insecurities. That's really the tragedy together with the comedy. And I think that's where I think we can help by talking about it. And that's why a lot of people have what I just said. I can never remember the name of it. What is it I'm supposed to have? I have to look it up. I can never remember the name of it. The, well, the abandonment thing. The abandonment thing, that is very much part of part borderline, yes. Borderline, yes. The abandonment thing. There was something else that was very... Oh, thinking people are talking about you, you know. This thing about you know, people go away and they're quite friendly and then they go away and start saying nasty things about you. Yeah, well, it's I think probably, that's not that's it's probably not true. But that's what you think is happening. 
Oh, no, I, I learned that's paranoid. But not all the time. I mean, I don't actually think that you, you know, you're very flattering to me. I don't believe that you actually go away and you ring up Johnny and say, oh, my God, that woman, she doesn't have to talk a lot. You know, things like that. <laughs> I, I like, I, and you know me well enough, I like to wear my heart on my sleeve. I, I say what I think. And, and right. people, people will know where they stand. I wrote a song, I wrote a song called my heart wearing my heart on my sleeve oh how does it go it goes it's a, it's a rude uh, musical type song when i'm strolling in the park now oh, hang on fragment the tune i can't isn't it funny i can't get the tune when i'm strolling because I, I, I sing it all the time in the park with some young dandy uh, never mind if he is Roger, Jim or Randy. He knows I'm wearing my heart on my sleeve. And oh, how he loves it. I could spend an awful lot of time concealing all the little things that I enjoy revealing when I am wearing my heart on my sleeve. And when I'm, oh, meet a man who wants to be my steady. He will know that I am good and ready. <laughs> it's, trying to, it's a musical type song. It is from Fanny's Revenge, and it's about the, the this girl called Melinda, take, called after uh, his wife, Melinda. Um, uh, and uh, she is a she is star, uh, a musical star. And um, she has a baby, an illegitimate baby. Um, because her lover has gone to the wild, the, um, gone, <laughs> what is it? He's gone on a boat. Yes, he's, he's a captain, yes, a sea captain. And his sh ship goes down, he goes down with the ship. And um, she, but anyway, this is the song. No, no, that's not it. No, but this is the song she sings as her, as her music hall pers person, yes. That's wonderful. I love it. Fanny, Fanny's Revenge. I love it. And but it touches human nature and it touches and so often with comedy. Oh, it does. It's, what it's what is it said about it? It, it was um oh I can't remember. But there's a wonderful headline it had. We're saying that the human humanity, yes, humanity and comedy and and also, of course, it starts in nineteen ten. Which is when she's this Melinda is the music and Fanny is a baby, so then we see Fanny growing up. We see her at six, and then at twelve, and then at eighteen, and then she becomes a big star. Of course, and she is a big star, but she has to get her revenge because she has this terrible uncle called Teddy Tapioca, <laughs> who um, <laughs> who is. Um, who, um, and he, he says that she's dead, tells the mother that he's dropped her in a down a manhole. <laughs> Sorry, it is very funny. <laughs> and, and anyway, he hasn't dropped her down a manhole, but he has to run because she's she gets very cross because you know she's, she's she's lost her baby, and he she marries the rich lord, lord um, forgotten his name. Anyway, she marries this lord and has a son. Um, then he dies, you know. so she's left as a, a widow, a very rich widow, <laughs> so she's quite happy, and she has this son, and, they, and then they, they gradually gr all grow up, you know, so then Fanny and Johnny meet each other, and Fanny is trying to get her revenge on her wicked mother for, for getting rid of her when she was a baby. That's the story that Teddy told her. But Teddy Tapioca is just the funniest villain <laughs> because it's useless. <laughs> he tells terrible jokes and he comes on and he's happy people, you, know, you lucky people or whatever, and to my train the thing. And he tells these terrible jokes. But she is the little Fanny is the star, you see. And she comes on and when she's, a, she has an Australian accent because they have to go to Australia and they have to run away. And she sings a song about kangaroo, kangaroo, and she does a song in Australian. They talk Australian and Australian accents. And then the next time she's in Sweden, so they, they talk with Swedish accents. <laughs> and then the next time they're in France, and so they talk French. And she sings this terrible song, this French song that Teddy Tapioca has written. 
which is a sort of menu, <laughs> just because it's all the all the French words that he's ever learned into a song. You know, quite funny. Oh, brilliant! Oh, fun, 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 fun. I mean, it was terribly, terribly funny, and we had such a good time with it. We did it several times in London, and we did it in in America. Um, I think we did it in California as well. Did it? Yes, we did it in Seattle and, and California, um, and. Uh, you know, I just long to do it again. Well, Unfortunately, you've given a glorious little glimpse into that. I'm sure people watching now will say, Fanny's Revenge, the course, return. Yes, of course, yes, of course. The return of Fanny's Revenge. Because yeah. in the background, you may not be able to hear it, because as you know, I overlook Regent's Park. And I can hear, they've just started Jesus Christ Superstar. It's an open air. Oh, theme. right, you must go, you must go. It's, it's that oh. glorious moment. No, no, it's, it's good. When it's finishing <laughs> on the song, I love it. And it's it. much more interesting than my father's revenge, I'm it's sure. It's not more interesting. Nothing is more interesting <laughs> than revenge. What a, what a glorious, like, that's your headline news. <laughs> they didn't like that in America because Fanny means bottom in America. Well, and it, yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah. the, we tended to be separated we, by the same language. Oh, they, I know what we call it, Doctor. Never mind. Dr. Footlights will see you through is one of the things that they say all the time. Elsie so, christened it Dr. Footlights, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rechristened it Dr. Footlights. Because they didn't like Fanny's Revenge in America. <laughs> they had to, <laughs> it had to be Dr. Footlights. Oh, what a yeah. wonderful We had Fanny Craddock over here. And the word Fanny, I mean, it's, it's now, I mean... No, yes, well, everyone, and, and another friend of mine, the one who I think ought to play it next time, because we had this wonderful girl, because the girl that played it the first time, in the first, when she was six years old, she did some tap dancing and sang this song. And then when she was 12, she played the, um, well, uh, a clarinet. And then when she was in America, when she was 18, not in America, when she was in France, and she had a saxophone. So she... <laughs> <laughs> she played all these instruments. So it's quite difficult to recast that, really. It is quite difficult. But maybe there's a call out. We, we can look for fannies everywhere. I, uh, can, I found one. You found one? Yes, she was in a play called Fanny, oddly enough. Oh, what? So, so, so she's typecast. She's now Fanny forever. The play oh. wasn't so funny. It was, well, it was quite funny. It's but not it was funny, Fanny. It was about. Um, people on the theatre, they kept putting them in prison because they had venereal diseases and things like that, you know. Oh, and uh, the guys that. had been with them. Yeah, I know. I know, it was appalling. Because they didn't, the guys who got away with it, they didn't, you know, they didn't worry about them. But uh, they did worry about the girls. So that was, a, you know, that was what that was about. Again, it was about a music hall. You know? All music hall people are called Fanny, I think. <laughs> also, no, and Fanny by Gaslight and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, it, and it's a glorious, but you don't, you don't have anybody called Fanny these days, do they? What's it short for? Francis. Francis. Called, so Francis is called Fanny. Yes, quite often. Yeah. As opposed to Franny. Franny or Franny, yes. Well, I've heard of Franny. I mean, I, I've heard yeah. of Franny. No, Franny. no, they, they did. They did uh, I think they were called Franny if they were Francis. So Fanny's a Franny without the R's. There might be another name that Fanny could come from. Okay. But I mean, I've got, you, you can have a copy of the tape. <laughs> oh, no, I love it. We, we'll play it. I'll tell you what we'll do on a future show. Let's do it. We should. We should... I think I've got it because my friend. Then it's, there's a bad story about it, but then everything that I have has got a bad story about it. Uh, the, reason, the, the other play, uh, Death on the Isle, <laughs> which was a sort of pseudo Agatha Christie, but the musician, one who wrote the music, he wrote, uh, have I told you this? I don't know. We all did it together in his great flat in, in at Regent's Park Road. And he just played the music and we wrote the words, and then we recorded his playing of it, and then we had another person to actually write it down, because he couldn't write it down. So he didn't write it down. And of course, the person who wrote it down also put a few bits in, as they would, right? So when it came to the PRS, they said they could co-written by, co-composed by, da -da and da -da, right? And the PRS said, well, you know, and, and then so the original 
writer who hadn't written it down, said, um, no, no, I, I am the composer, you know, you can't have any, any of it. And I had said in the thing, arranged by, with additional music by, that I had to cope that way, but they wouldn't have it. One of them said, no, I wrote that bit, I wrote that bit, so I am part composer. So there was a great big scene about it. And uh, both of them are now dead, so I think maybe we could do that one as well. Oh, but, well, but no, but copyright, copyright goes on for uh, several years. Yes, after. I know. Well, I've got to find out what it, how, how it was originally done. And I also well, need well, to know, it's now seven I, know I know the, I know the arranger, I know the arranger and he's, his son has sent me all this music that he, right. he um, and um, he's, he'd had the music written down and he sent it to me. But the other guy, I have to find out, you know, who... There's no, there's no harm paying. I, I, I like the idea. Creators should get their worth. And that's, that's why it's there. That's well, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, the thing yeah. is, that if, if two people are saying that they wrote it... Oh, I know. And then but you, you, it, it sometimes is a good way to say, look, here's your pot of money. Once you've sorted it out, make sure <laughs> there's a fair distribution. It's a, well, I, neither of them. I mean, there must be somebody. Not war, war. And you have that with There must be somebody to inherit his money. Well, I, I think that's... I think it was quite well off. No, it's all good. Well, listen, it, it's been an absolute delight. Yes, yes, I must let you go to Richard. Well, you don't have to let me go, but it's an absolute yeah. delight to catch up. Thank you so much, as <laughs> always, for um, being my guest. Yes, I know, and, and without getting washed or anything, I'm still in my... And I, I do not have noticed that when I start thing with you my hair looks fairly all right but as the time goes by by the time we've finished it's all over the place is that, is that the effect of being on the andrew Eborn show <laughs> <laughs> yes sorry i've just been on the andrew Eborn show <laughs> um, well i'm looking forward to the next time um <sighs> But for now, what do you want to talk about next time? I'm sure we what have we talk many, about? many things. What did we talk about this time? Oh, yeah, we, we talked about Oliver Reed. We talked about the importance of laughter. We no, about Oliver Alice. Reed. It's not the show about Oliver Reed. <laughs> He's got, yeah. enough, he's got enough publicity. You, you told me you had chemistry with Oliver Reed. I like no, that. He said that. I didn't say it. <sighs> You see, this is how stories, this is exactly how stories get about. <laughs> well, we talked about exactly it's how stories said and twisted around. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. The twisted <laughs> story of Oliver Reed and the history and chemistry lesson. It should be good. <laughs> but the headline will write itself. It's always a joy. We'll work yeah, that one out. Will you promise me not to mention Oliver Reed in it? And, 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 well, I could put it in and broken promises. That could be that could be the headline. It could be the headline. It's always a thrill. We love it. Uh, it's a headline grab. Anyway, must, yeah, so I'm sure people know. I mean, must know that I knew Oliver. Reed. I mean, I knew lots of people. I think it's very good, and I think it's good to say that you knew Oliver Reed. Yes, I know, but you don't have to make it the title. And there are more important things in life than Oliver Reed. Oh, that's a that's a good title. There are more important things. <laughs> <in life. laughs> but Oliver Reed, that'll be the title. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. the title. It's All good. Right. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to say goodbye now. Say goodbye. Nice to see you. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. Bye. So thank you again to the wonderful Aline for being my very, very special guest and sharing those many many important memories and there are more important things than Oliver Reed but some of them are worth discussing and some not so much. If you'd like to be a guest yourself on the show write to me at guests at uh, octopustv.com that's guests at octopustv.com and we'll get you on the show. Um, it's lovely to see you. Thank you very much for watching uh, but for now I've been Andrew Eborn. It's been a real pleasure having your company. Take care. Goodbye.